so thanks very much for that. Um, this is where it could all go horribly wrong. Um, <laughs> we're just about to uh, switch laptops, so feel free to go ahead. So I think one of the things uh, Lizzie mentioned there, and what we've been trying to sort of demonstrate uh, throughout the day, and hopefully uh, it's uh, showing, is through this layered approach, there are so many techniques, there are so many products, and what we're trying to do today um, is we'll just give you a flavour of those, but ultimately probably demonstrate to you that um, no matter how much knowledge and how much you think you know, the uh, landscape is still moving quicker than you can, so you're going to need product um, to help you. Um, Cyberseer, um, when I was first demoed this product, um, it's a bit like Star Trek. It's, uh, uh, you'll thank me for that, I'm yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit like Star Trek. But one of the things we also wanted to do today was, um, demonstrate, it works, was demonstrate the, the art of the possible and also um, how things uh, move on and what uh, technology and what uh, product is bringing. So without further ado, I shall hand over to Andrew and uh, he will talk you through uh, Star Trek for the next generation. Thank you. <laughs> it's not going to be quite that fun. Well, I don't know if you get Star Trek fans, but it's probably not going to be quite that fun. Um, okay, so my name is Andrew. Uh, I am the lead analyst, or a lead analyst with uh, Cybersea. So our banner's over there. Um, we work with a variety of vendors uh, to put together managed service solutions. Um, today I'm just going to talk to you about one product in particular, which is called Darktrace, which you guys may or may not know. Um, just out of interest, show of hands of who knows Darktrace or seen it, heard of it, anything? Okay. A few. Okay, so... Including your own staff. Yes. <laughs> 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 take part. <laughs> Wouldn't be worried. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what Darkness is and then I'm going to show you it. Um, to show you the demo. Uh, don't know, rather do that than talk to you guys about it. Uh, it's quite good to see. Quite Star trek -y. So, a um, bit about us then before we get into it. We would... We, had the idea to put together a managed service offering that would be something slightly more bespoke and slightly more kind of niche than say the big or the big players like Dell Works and people have done with just managing people's stocks and their seniors. Because those guys have kind of got that quite wrapped up quite well. So we wanted to come along and provide something in that kind of 10% space, you know. Take the theme of today, the whole you are compromised thing, let's come along and let's help people with that extra little bit, what can we do to push people really with some cyber budgets to say, okay, let's come along and give you the next step on top of what you're already doing, if you're already doing this stuff quite well. So we, we scoped the market and we looked for a couple of products, a few products, and what we needed was we needed a way that we could come along to a client's network and we could put something in their network that would allow us to get the kind of full visibility that we need to do this, because we're going on the assumption that the signatures are useless, we're going on the assumption that you're already compromised, and we're going on the assumption that you don't know where the attacks are coming from. So we couldn't rely on logs, and we couldn't rely on any kind of predefined notions of bad. So we needed full network security monitoring packet capture stuff, and that's quite difficult to do. Uh, I don't know if you guys have tried to roll out full NSM programs across networks, take full PCAPs, analyze them, very hard to do. So Darktrace is great for us because it's kind of the whole NSM thing in a box. So what it will do is it will go in there and we'll do full PCAPs and we'll get all that data and we'll have it there. And we'll have it all in one appliance, that full trace of network traffic that we can use to run our investigations on. But the problem with doing full NSM stuff is you just drown in data, right? If you've got the state of many tens of thousands of endpoints and you've got terabytes and terabytes of packet captures, you need a smart way to sift that data and spot the interesting stuff. If you're not relying on SIGs anymore, you can't just start digging around. You've got to have something to guide you and get you through it. So this is all the maths, jazzy, machine learning stuff, big data things, buzzwords, all that stuff. So Darktrace is based on recursive Bayesian estimation, and it's going to take all the stuff that's put on packets, and it's going to start to model your environment and look for things and things that's anomalous, and then it's going to show you them, and it's going to present them to you in a way that you can then, as an analyst, come to it and run them down and investigate them and see what does this mean, what's going on in the environment, is this something we should be interested in? So let me show you it. And I'll talk a little bit more about how it does that and what sort of things we look at with it as I show you it. Um, <coughs> so 
This is the interface of the box. It's a physical appliance you throw it in, and it's going to pull all that data out of the packets. And what it's going to do is it's going to do a whole like protocol analyzer, detect what things are. Based on that, it's going to say, okay, I need the headers, and I want this much of the body for context, and then it will throw away the rest of the packet. And then once it's got the headers and a bit of the body, it's going to pull out what it's interested in. And it's interested in 300 or so features that are rich enough for it to start doing this interesting model. So it's got your very high-level net flowy stuff in there, like connection durations and packet sizes and all that. And then it's got more specific things deeper in the packet that it wants to look at. Things like SSL certs, and Kerberos logins, and all these kind of things. It's going to pull them out of the packet, and it's going to take that distilled layer of metadata, and it's going to start to run all its jazz maths on it, and it's going to start to find stuff in that. So primarily, this is to help us detect stuff. But when we put it into a customer's environment, we need to know and learn the network very quickly, and we can't really have any time to configure this stuff or go and look at their old crumpled network diagrams to try and figure out what's going on in the network. So by virtue of the way Dark Trace works and by virtue of the powerful protocol analyzer stuff, it's a really good network topology visibility platform for us. So we put it in and it does this kind of very high level data flow stuff. We've got like, you know, these are devices talking to each other and the thicker, brighter the line of all data. And these are your subnets. So we've got like these subnets talk quite a bit. These subnets never talk. You can look at it. We put this in with customers and we show it them and they often go, you know, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, we didn't know those two subnets would be talking. Or why is that device seeing so much traffic? So it's just a very quick high level view of stuff. And then we can start to dig into it and we can actually start to see what's going on and leverage all the kind of stuff that we're pulling out of the packet. So these are some of the things that we pull out. And we look at it, and there's your high-level flowy stuff, like external connections, um, data transfer, it's going to visualize all that stuff here. there. And then these are your more specific things that we're interested in, like, we've got the Kerberos login figures, no, that's nice. It's a DC, so I thought we would have some. Just look at the Kerberos login, there you go. So here's our domain controller, and this is just showing us, at this time, up in the top right, what happened in the environment. What did this device do in a time period? Let's open up a time period, let's say a 15-minute period. So this is so essential for us, and this is why we love it so much, because we can throw this one box into a customer's environment. And on the box here, we have now, for this device, you know, all this kind of aggregate high-level metadata stuff, we can filter it, let's have a look at all the TCP traffic, blah, 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 whatever you want, and then we can start to dig in, and we've got connection by connection, all the stuff we pulled out of the packets, which sits in Elasticsearch, if you guys have down with the ELK stack and you like all that stuff, and then we can go down and call the packet capture off if we need it. So we have this whole, full trace there in the box, in this kind of very high level, 10,000 foot view, just data flows right down to the packet capture. And what Darkest have tried to do, and we think they've done quite a good job, is build an interface that can kind of hold your hand in that process. So starting right from your network and going, okay, I'm interested in this, this time window, this connection, narrow down, narrow down, so you're not stuck in the weeds and all that. Okay, so that's what it does for starters. But this is all about finding bad stuff. So, um, there's two ways in which Dark is going to help you find bad stuff. Remember, we don't like sinks. We don't like to assume that we know what's happened in your network, so it's not going to assume anything about what's happened. It's going to turn things <laughs> yellow when they go weird. And it's going to show you things down here, breaches of what it calls models, which are the bits of math, when it thinks you should look at a device. And these are, some of them are very high level, like this, like unusual activity, makes no assumption about what it is. Some of them are a bit more specific, looking for things like beaconing behaviors, lateral movement patterns, the kinds of things that if you see on a network, you start to go, oh, that's interesting, I should go and check that out. And what we're doing here is we're looking at behavioral stuff, right? We're looking symptomatically. We're saying we don't really care what the latest attack technique is. We don't really care what the latest APT group is. We're gonna look at what attackers do. We're gonna spot that level of movement. We're gonna spot them staging stuff. We're gonna look at stuff before it leaves the network. Throughout that whole kind of life cycle of moving around the network, we're gonna try and see what's going on. And we're gonna try and point out things that you might be interested in. So, let me show you one example. I'm not going to spend forever on this stuff, but just to give you a feel of what we do here. Here's an example of something Dark Trace has gone. This is interesting. You might want to have a look at this. And in this case, we've just got a server, and it's just making a connection out, and it's flagged it for us for two reasons. One is this rarity of the host name score. So it scores everything. Um, and this is a comparison across your environment. What do other devices in your network do? Uh, who do they talk to? This device, or this type of device, has obviously never, or very rarely been seen connected to this host name. So for this device and this type of device in this environment, that's a, an interesting fact that it's connected to the host name. 
And then what the other metric is that we're going to use is we're going to compare this device to its own history. So for each kind of thing it's pulled out of the packet, for each device, we've got these kind of models in there. And this is what all the maths is really in aid of, right? It's building up these learned patterns of what happens. So we've got here external connectors of port 80 for this one device, this um, server. And so we've got here is dark traces saying, I've seen enough now to say that this device never sends stuff out on a Sunday, never sends stuff out on a Saturday, or sends a big old chunk out on a Wednesday afternoon. So it has a very clear, predictable pattern of behavior. If this was a desktop, this would be very chaotic and wouldn't have these clear peaks and we follow web browsing traffic or whatever. But because we have this nice crisp pattern, when it deviates from that and when it comes in at a different time, in this case on a Friday afternoon, that's kind of statistically interesting. So it gives it a, a high enough score and then it goes, okay, go and check it out. And it may or may not be bad. It may or may not be interesting. You want to look at that and you want to go, oh, I know what that is. And go, oh, that's our, our dev team switching out quite agile. We're using a different set of tools now. So yeah, I know what that is. Now we're connecting out to these sites or, or whatever it is. Or it might be an HR issue. We put this in to a customer's network and we find a whole range of stuff, right? We find misconfigurations right through to actually quite advanced, sophisticated stuff actual kind of subtle attack patterns. A lot of the things we find, we never find out what they are. Right? We report back to customers and it goes into a black hole. We go, look, we've got this device on your network. We've seen it sending this stuff out to this IP fairly regularly. These sorts of quantities of data, we think you should probably go check that out. And they go, we'll go check it out. And then we ask them about it and we never hear what happened. But that's fine. So to wrap up then, at that very, very quick whistle talk, speed to it through what dark race is. I mean, it doesn't really matter exactly what particular bits of math are in this test system. It's more about the idea of what we're doing here, right? We're trying to use this anomaly-based approach to highlight devices that a human analyst can then go and look at. It's basically a way to guide and funnel down a huge amount of data so you can divert and channel and focus your analyst effort because people don't have infinite man hours to go digging through the network and mm -hmm. find stuff. Um, so what we do is we wrap my service around this because we talk to a lot of people and some people do have a team of analysts sitting there, excited and happy to have something like this to play with and go and dig through it, but a lot of people don't have the manpower. So we kind of take, use this as our platform to go through and triage these and investigate them for customers on a sort of daily, weekly basis, and we report back to them. And so you know, we bug them down, we go, oh, I know what that is, I'm not sure what that is, and we report back and say, we think we've seen this kind of malware, we think we've seen this kind of behavior, this looks like a malicious insider, you might want to check out why this guy, until now, never used to connect to anything but this one file server, and now he's connecting to five file servers and pulling back quite a lot of data, you might want to go look into it. So we give those kind of bits of intelligence back to our customers. And it's all very um, <coughs> descriptive. You kind of, this kind of mindset towards security, it's, this is not your IDS firing off on every atomic event and saying you had an SQL injection attempt on index or PHP yesterday at 11.41. This is dark trace going, this device is interesting, and this is us looking at it and going back to the customer and going, we agree this device is interesting, and we think it's interesting because it's done these kinds of high-level behaviors that you might want to look into. Just to reiterate some key points then, um, we don't tell it anything, we throw it in, it knows not to the box. It classifies things, you know, it's classified this as a server, it's classified these as desktops. We want to be in a position where we can see all your Active Directory traffic, your DHCP traffic, so we can start to do stuff like this. You can see there it's got a, a user credential. So Darktrace has associated the um, person with the device based on the uh, Kerberos uh, tickets that it can see. And so then we start to model people as well. So we can go down here and we can go, let's have a look at what people are doing dodgy stuff on our network. And so we can go, let's look at this guy. And we can see what he's got here. He's got lots of beaconing type behaviors going out. He's got multiple interesting compromises. Darktrace is thrown up. A lot of these connections are really interesting from this guy. And so what we would do then as CyberSeer is we would go and investigate this and pull back the PCAPs and see, can we figure out what happened to this guy in the last few days that means that Darktrace thinks this guy's deviated from his peers and from his history. Now there's a lot of detail of how Darktrace does what it does um, that makes it good at this because we spent a while kind of scoping products to find one that actually worked and do this big data thing in a box which it does do. And so I'd love to talk to you guys more about how it does it, and I'm sure some of you might have some alarm bells might be ringing for some people about some kind of pitfalls that you may want to ask how it avoids. So that'll be interesting. Um, but obviously, since we only have 15 minutes and I'm now done, please do come talk to us. Uh, as Mark pointed out, my colleagues are sitting over there at the back, so you can grab any of us if you're interested. 
uh, and hear more about us or hear more about the art trace. Um, but for now, I hope that is interesting looking to you guys. And I hope you get the value maybe in taking the kind of approach that we bet on as a company and that we are trying to do for others.